You may have realized that being healthy feels different than it did in the past now that you're over 50. If you want to maximize your health potential but don't have time to read through overwhelming pages of Google links, this is the show for you. Welcome to Healthy Tips After 50. We love doing the research, finding solutions, talking to health experts, and learning what works and what doesn't. Now, your host. She spent the last 25 years dedicated to feeling her best and is here to share her best findings with you, Susan Rosen. Hello, everyone. This is your host, Susan. And today my guest is Parker Olson. Hi, Susan. And hello. And Parker is um, is just actually, well, I don't want to say starting out in this in the, the world of nutrition and, um, and health, but um, I think he's been through a lot. It would be real interesting to hear his story and some of the things he's done. And he also has a personal interest in, in people that are a little older mm. and and their health. So yeah. welcome, Parker. And why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me on. Um, I'm excited to be here. And yeah, I, as mentioned, you know, I am 27, <laughs> maybe, you know, not quite in, in my 50s, um, but my, <laughs> my parents are in their 50s and, and uh it's funny growing up, I always used to love to, um, I would always kind of was told I had the soul of a six year old when I was nine, you know, I wanted to go and like play cribbage and, and sit and, and have conversations. So, um, but yeah, yeah. My journey starts really in like 20, 2018. Um, and you know, 2018, I, I had just kind of gotten out of college and was in the working world, you know, was, was fighting the fight and for, for one reason or another, and I really think it was a lack of autonomy at, at work. I kind of was bored, if you will. I decided I that, that yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we all do. I decided that, you know, I, I was curious why people were eating like the, the vegan diet, particularly, mm. um, and I, you know, I could understand it from an environmental reason, from an environmental standpoint, people were like, hey, I think eating meat's bad for the environment, something I really care about. Okay, that makes sense to me. But there were other people that were deciding to go vegan because it was healthier and, and you know, maybe made them feel better. And I was like, okay, I, I don't, I've, I've never experienced that myself, right? I've never experienced you know, what you're eating really impacts like how you're feeling day to day. So I decided I would, I would do a 30 day experiment. Like, I'm going to go okay. vegan for 30 days. Let's just see what happens. Like I'm going to stick to it. And the first couple of weeks were tough. Um, I just remember, you know, you just have cravings and, and you're used to just yeah. kind of eating whatever you want and not, you know, applying serious bounds there. At least I was. Yeah. So I, I noticed around day 14, 17, I just noticed like a shift of, I started to I started to feel like good. I don't know. I just started to feel like quicker and and uh, I don't know, sort of just healthier. Like I felt a little bit more giddy and I stopped craving uh, like lots of things like meat or, or or lots of sugars. I was eating a pretty clean vegan diet. Uh, uh-huh. And at the end of it, you know, I was like, okay, this is cool. Like I actually like notice a shift in how and how I feel and I feel and it's for the better. Okay, like th- this is real. This is cool. Like I I, sh- I should look into this more. Um, and I decided, you know, after those thirty days were up, okay, like what what else how else are people eating like but this could be interesting let's continue down this rabbit hole and so for 18 months in a row i tried 18 different like nutritional regimens 30 days at a time um so you know kind of went through a lot of like the popular quote-unquote like diets or nutritional regimens um you know everything from gluten-free keto the the whole 30 diet which was fascinating paleo the carnivore diet um atkins diet um, and, and so forth. And for me, it was this like sort of awakening, if you will, around like what you're putting in your body, like genuinely impacts how you're feeling. And it could be, you know, for a slew of reasons, it could be, you know, reduction in inflammation. Um, it could ju- be just be like properly fueling your body. And so like, you know, you have stable amounts of energy, right? And so there's all sorts of ways. And, you know, I'll preface really quickly as well, Susan, a question I often get, and I don't know, maybe you're thinking is like, oh, mm-hmm. like what, what's, what's the like, what's the answer, right? Like, how which one I did be? you like best? Yeah. And, and I will <laughs> Maybe answer is a that. better way of putting it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I will answer that. But it's it's nuanced. And what I always say is, you know, I, I suggest and I think everyone should go and try and try this for themselves, right? We all have individual bodies that have individual needs. And we're all getting different amounts of sunlight and water and doing different levels of activity. Um, and so mm-hmm. I, I think it's really powerful to go through that experience yourself. You know, you don't have to spend 18 months doing it. Um, I do think it's important to spend at least like three weeks trying anything um, because I, I really started to see the differences after like two weeks. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, my kind of, you know, general takeaways from, from the experience were number one, the diets that included and, and and revolved around whole foods made me feel the best. So like whenever I was eating, you know, fruits, vegetables, you know, proteins, um, like that is where I was feeling good, which I'm mm -hmm. guessing isn't like a major shocker. I don't know. Does that surprise you? Susan? No, not particularly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that, that was sort of number one. <clears throat> number two was I found that the um you know there were a couple diets I actually felt really really good on um uh -huh. one one of which was was the keto diet which is interesting I think there's a lot of controversy there disclaimer I do not eat keto today um but uh -huh. what I found was it's really hard to maintain um and, and it's very restrictive both like socially uh -huh. and and in what you can eat um and so you know I, I felt like even at the end of that, I still was like grappling all the time and wasting lots of mental energy being like, oh, like I want to do this, but uh, like, I don't know if I'll be able to eat or whatever. And so one of my big takeaways as well from kind of the, the whole experiment was like, you ultimately want to land on eating something where, where you sort of believe you can eat this way, you know, arguably for the rest of your life, right? Like if, if right. it's really challenging and isn't conducive to your lifestyle, like it's, it's really not worth your time. It, it creates a lot of, you know, mental drain. Um, mm -hmm. so that was another mm -hmm. takeaway for me. And then the third takeaway was, um, was really about, uh, mushrooms. Mm -hmm. So one of the months towards the end, when I'd sort of run out of like, you know, what, what diets exist that I actually think are, are sort of interesting and or doable was I decided I, I would sort of just stick to like a, a standard kind of whole, whole food diet. And mm -hmm. I, got off of all caffeine, all supplementation, everything. And I was supplementing with these functional mushrooms that I had been reading about, um, mm -hmm. medicinal mushrooms, a couple like lion's mane, chaga, turkey tail, reishi, cordyceps, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I'd started to be reading about them. Are, it sounds like you're pretty familiar. And do you, oh, yeah. do you take any? Do you take any of these or have you? Um, I used to. Um, okay. I, they don't, like I said, mushrooms don't really agree with me that mm -hmm. much. Um, and, um, my husband takes a few of them. He takes, okay. he takes about three or four different combinations. Okay, cool. So yeah, someone that familiar. He, that he gets. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm definitely familiar with it. It's, um, they're one of, they're one of the things that it's like, I look at it and go, God, I wish I could take that. That would really probably help my brain, you know, okay, <laughs> help cool. my okay. memory. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. So we'll, yeah, we'll get there. Um, and I got introduced to these, you know, I, I, I'm from the East Coast, so I'm very skeptical at heart, you know, very, very skeptical okay. and, and, and tough. But I, I got introduced to these when I moved out to Seattle, and I wanted to get into weird Seattle stuff. And I went to um, a class at an apothecary titled Adaptogens and Tonics. And ah, there you go. at the time, I thought it was witchcraft. I was like this. I was like, we're going to go in and like brew something in a stew. And then, and then we're going to drink it and like, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And so anyways, I, I went and, um, you know, the class was actually really lovely. And, uh, you know, they start, they served a tea and, you know, they actually, they actually gave a tongue reading, which I, which I found to be pretty fascinating. Oh, okay. Yeah. Those are, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, I'm listening, I'm drinking this tea and, and I kind of noticed that I sort of had this relaxed, like calm energy. Like I, I mm. my mind wasn't floating. I was very engaged and, and calm. I wasn't tired, but I was very just like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it almost felt like what I would believe to be like a, a muscle relaxant would feel like. And huh. yeah, I, I later found out that um, what was in the tea was, was a reishi, it was a reishi mushroom tea, oh, okay. which, okay. which reishi is, is a type of, um, is a type of mushroom. It's supposed to have a relaxing effect. And I had no idea before I had felt the effects and then I had learned about it and I, you know, instantly became pretty curious. Um, mm -hmm. So and a little bit of context as well. My educational background is in neuroscience and, and finance, but um, I was oh, originally... Yeah, pre-med and neuroscience. I spent uh -huh. a year in high school uh, taking a course at MIT, and the entire year was based on um, how drugs impact the brain. So we went through all the different wow. drug classes. That must yeah, have been interesting. Yeah. So interesting. Um, yeah. Eye-opening, too, as, as a high schooler. You know, you look at, okay, I drink caffeine every day. I didn't realize this is technically a drug. Um, yeah, so that's right. Yeah, Got my cup of tea. Here we are. <laughs> there it is. And uh, so, anyways, I I had kind of learned about what psychedelics do to the brain, and it was also an interesting takeaway for mm. me was, um, yeah, okay, psychedelics are there's actually a lot of really interesting research here, but they're painted as yeah. this horrible, horrible thing. Um, you know, and, and I guess just curious, Susan, what 
like what, what's your take on on psychedelics i guess just in general like do you um, see them in a negative light positive light oh no i don't see i see them definitely see them as a positive um i did a little bit of some psychedelics when i was in high school so very cool that was season. a long time ago yeah <laughs> um but i i do know of some of some other people now mm -hmm. um who actually it reminds me i haven't talked to him in a long time um back in new york city as a matter of fact who are very big on on the psychedelics and using those for health yeah. for health reasons and um <clears throat> i i think it's it's like so many things it has a it's a, it's time and its place depending on on your what you're looking for which how your body is totally you know? it's it's like it's like everything yep <laughs> and you and me. and but it's also something it's not like oh i'm going to try a new piece of fruit thing mm -hmm. i mean it's something you need to do under a little bit of supervision i think to, to get started and maybe even Definitely. continuing depending on what it, what it is that you're doing totally yeah totally agree um slight disclaimer i am um last year or year and a half ago i got certified as a psilocybin peer supporter so i help administer All right. psychedelic trips um Good job. And, you know honestly like yeah. what you just described was like the kind of the ethos around it is is because it's like there are interesting benefits not for everyone it's not for all the time um but oftentimes you know people want to do it with someone who they trust and you know can help yeah. administer through that and not everybody has access to a, to a psychiatrist um who you know right now is is one of the yes. only you know professions that is, is really able to do that so anyways mm -hmm. sorry we, we we do digress a yeah. little bit yeah anyways yeah. this this experiment um got me really into mushrooms i you know then spent the month supplementing with them and and that yeah. month was the month that i like really felt best um wow. out of all these 18 months so uh -huh. just had tons of energy like was sleeping really really well getting just like good hours of sleep i wasn't you know i was just a clean clean sleep i was really productive at work it was just huh. like very active like had a very positive outlook on life um yeah and so you know i, I became more curious I, I dove into the research um you know, I ended up getting really, really getting into mushroom foraging out in Seattle. Oh, I joined okay. the the largest mycological society in uh, the world. It's a mushroom, uh -huh. mushroom club for short. Right. And yeah, yeah. And uh, sat on the board there for about two years. And then, um, yeah, I started a food company to help get some of these mushrooms into people's diets around the belief oh, that, you know, there okay. are mushrooms that can help solve and address mass health concerns. Um, mm -hmm. So I started a food company that fortifies different packaged foods with um, with different mushrooms. And then, oh, you know, most recently okay. um, sit, on, sit on the board of a, of a naturally uh, natural food network. It's, it's one of the biggest natural food networks in the U.S. And I sit on the board of, of the Seattle chapter just trying to help promote and uh -huh. build up smaller food brands that are you know helping to trying to trying to make people feel better so, so that's that's my yeah. background a little long-winded but go ahead. no that's 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 great very interesting mm -hmm. you've certainly you've done a lot a Tried. lot more than people do in their in their whole <laughs> lives so <laughs> day by day it's pretty neat yeah. yeah yeah no i would i would love to hear a little bit more about the um about the mushrooms and your supplements and, and sure you know some of that that stuff um and particularly for those of us that are that are on the other side of 60 sure yeah getting, getting close to 70 here yeah. yeah so yeah i guess the way that i think about mushrooms in general right mm -hmm. and so i think a lot of people think mushrooms are sort of black and white it's like you know this is for people that aren't super familiar with functional mushrooms um you have mushrooms that are edible like a portobello mushroom and then you have mushrooms that uh, can kill you. And then you have mushrooms that are psychedelic and make you maybe go, cra you know, go crazy, right? Mm -hmm. um, the reality is, it's like m mushrooms, I guess, like like a lot of things are are really on this like broad spectrum, right? It's like, mm -hmm. you know, maybe over here you have sort of edible mushrooms. And here you have these functional or, or medicinal mushrooms, very legal. They've been used quite literally for thousands of years, uh, medicinally, primarily in the Eastern Hemisphere. And then, mm -hmm. you know, maybe yeah. you have the psychedelic mushrooms and then like these lethal poisonous mushrooms. Um, so mushrooms have sort of all tons of different benefits depending on the type of mushroom that, that you're looking to consume um some of mm. them are really rich in vitamin d um some of them have lots mm. of fiber and, and protein um and the mushrooms that i primarily looked at and, and worked at have more of uh you know what we refer to as, as functional benefits so these aren't necessarily you know macro benefits is what i reference like protein fiber etc 
Um, yeah. These are benefits that maybe are addressing inflammation um, or maybe are helping your, your brain cells grow um, or okay. are some of them are even used um, in cancer treatments um, around the world. So, you know, can actually oh, help target cancer cells and, and kill cancer cells. Uh -huh. So th this is the category of mushrooms that, that I'm most interested in. Um, and for anyone who, who again is like, oh, what mushroom should I take? Yeah. It, it kind of depends, you know, what sort of yeah. what sort of benefits you're looking for. But I my catch all mushroom where I'm like, I think everybody should just be injecting this mushroom into their bloodstream actually is is turkey tail, which which, uh, which we don't use that. today. But are are you familiar with? I yeah, I am familiar with it. Yeah. Okay. Do you, do you know much about it or, or you just kind of heard of it? Well, let's just put it this way. My memory is not as good as it used to be. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I don't remember exactly. I just, I just know. I, I don't think I ever tried it. Okay. But um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, long story short, it, you know, turkey tail really addresses inflammation, and then also it helps target and kill like mutated cells in the body. Um, okay. So it's, it's really like, like turkey tail is the primary mushroom they're using in different cancer treatments around the world. So it's sort of as. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's just like a really good foundational mushroom to include. Um, the mm -hmm. mushrooms, though, that that I really that that we focus on and that I've been most intrigued by, um, is primarily that this lion's mane mushroom, which really helps with cognitive health. It helps protect against Alzheimer's, um, and mm -hmm. it's it, you know we can dive into a little bit of the science there. Um, but one of the other mushrooms that we also use um, and and focus on in, in our products particularly is it's a vitamin D brown button mushroom. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, so you know wild guess is in how many people in the united states do you think are vitamin d deficient oh it's probably over half i would guess mm -hmm. yes it's one and two so it's yeah. it's over half across the world um but yeah one and two are vitamin d deficient um the fda right now it's under review to actually increase the level of recommended vitamin d um you know they're seeing that it's it's a really important vitamin for bodily function um, yeah so yeah. that's definitely a, a place we target and these there's a mushroom that um when exposed to certain ultraviolet light it it releases uh, the most bioavailable vitamin d you can consume outside of the sun wow yeah so yeah well and, and even that if you're if you're not very number one how how much you, you go out in the sun right right and people are very hesitant to do that these days um where you are on the earth yep as to how much you're getting and and how your body takes it in mm -hmm. right there are so many variables that yeah maybe the the most um i don't know the the most available if you want to call it <laughs> right <laughs> and yeah, even it's... then sometimes it's not available right because it's raining um, <laughs> yeah. so yeah i i think i think that's one of those things that that people don't don't realize and you were probably going to talk about this anyways, which is that I think, oh, I go out for my daily walk. So I'm getting mm -hmm. my vitamin D. It's like, well, where do you live? How you covered know, up are do you, you, you know? I was just going to say, do you, are you wearing short sleeves and shorts or what, you know, what exactly are you, are you doing? I don't think people realize that it's not just walk outside your front door for, you know, half an hour. And, yeah. You know. Yeah. Like you're, you're good <laughs> for the day. Right. Um, yeah. And like things like like makeup or there's certain you know skincare that that can block yeah. radiation right SP, spf Absolutely. obviously is blocking sun rays where you know you're, you're not yeah, really that's... absorbing the vitamin d which you know, i'm yeah. not gonna not telling you not to wear sunscreen but no, they're no. it's not as straightforward um yeah so yeah yeah it's and you know i think ovid sort of shed some light on the you know the, mm. the value of vitamin d there, there were some studies that that were it, it, you know, still not mm -hmm. proven as, as direct um, studies, but, but more like correlatory studies that were showing like, Hey, if, if you have high levels of vitamin D, like you're less likely to, to actually contract COVID. So yes, um, yes. <clears throat> there were interesting studies done and, you know, just touching on some of the data that, that I've seen, you know, in the last 18 months, there's been a 59% increase in, in purchasing vitamin D like at the grocery store. Um, so mm -hmm. people are starting to like come around, I think, you know, talk about it and, and learn about it. Um, so yeah, yeah, but those are the two, you know, mushrooms we focus on and really, you know, what we're trying to help create are products that help with cognitive health and, and sort of fortify with mm -hmm. vitamin D, which is also really important in cognitive health. Um, but the mushroom that, that we focus on, it's, um, it's called lion's mane. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if, you know, it, it sounds like your, your husband takes it. The other, like the scientific mm -hmm. name that, that, that some folks may see it around as is uh, Herisium erinaceus, and I and I totally butchered that. I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't do, um, I'm not super good with scientific names. So please yeah. excuse me. Yeah, 
That that's interesting because I've all I ever see is lion's mane these days. I mean, I don't. Know. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's good. Um, yeah. yeah. We'll leave the science names out for right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah there, and there's there's been you know hundreds if not thousands of studies done, um, mm-hmm. primarily in the eastern hemisphere, which which is why we don't you know get exposed to them very much, but that are showing like you know are able to protect um, against you know, diseases such as Alzheimer's, uh, Parkinson's, really like neural degenerative diseases, um, and how that mushroom is is addressing that and, and what it's doing, right? Like, you know, what's actually going on here is mm-hmm. it is known to be one of the best synthesizers or it, it enables um, th- the synthesis of neurogrowth factor. Um, and it mm-hmm. sounds like you have some familiarity with, with neurogrowth factor. Mm-hmm. Do you want to sh- share a little bit for the followers or just like generally, I guess what it is? And, and I'm happy to as well. I just figured. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, um, I guess it must have been probably half a year, maybe a year. I, um, I was taking the BDNF and uh, was a liquid, you know, jo- drops. Yep. Um, and, and I was using that. Um, and I didn't particularly see a difference. Okay. You know, um, I've, I've read some great stuff around it and I'm, and I'm still tempted to go back and try and, you know, but I just, as with a lot of things, Sometimes it's better off if you get the BDNF closer to where it actually started. Yeah, like naturally through like a, a food or something versus a supplement. Yes, yes, exactly, totally. exactly, yeah. I think, you know, too, as, as part of that, right, like there's a lot of unknowns around, you know, are, are there supportive, um, are there supporting vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients in some of these foods that, that, that maybe, you know, contain neurogrowth factor that are actually helping it, you know, be bioavailable right. that like exactly. we just don't really understand. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, there's a whole argument around that for like eating organic um, or like, you know, real foods. Right. So yeah. I, I, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's unclear. Um, and yeah, effectively, yeah. Ne- neural growth factor um, is helping maintain uh, your neural cells. It's, it's sort of what neural, neural cells are feeding on to help them, you know, grow and prune and, and really keep like a healthy neural network. Um, mm-hmm. so, so, you know, when they talk about, you know, neuro, lion's mane being able to help with Alzheimer's, that's sort of just one potential outcome, right? Like there are studies that are showing, you know, creativity levels, to, um, you know, yes, yes, by self-reporting, but are, are shown to increase in like double blind studies of participants who are taking um, an effective amount of lion's mane every single day. Mm. Um, productivity levels kind of show this, this, this similar, um, similar outcome. And so you're seeing mm-hmm. like, okay, the brain and, and the neural structure, right, impact, yes, out, you know, hundreds of thousands of functions. And when your neural cells are, are happy and healthy, you know, a lot of those functions you're seeing just improvements in. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's, you know, that's what we focus on. And I think, you know, part of the reason as well, I think some people are skeptical is oftentimes what I've seen is when people learn about things like this, what they do is they say, okay, I'm interested. I'm going to go try it. And the easiest, you know, way to try something like this with the least amount of friction is you go on, you go to Amazon, search Lions Man, the number one search result comes up and it's typically relatively the best price because everybody wants a deal. <clears throat> they, they, they purchase the supplement and they consume it. And then they're like, oh, I didn't see any effects. Uh, this isn't real. And the reality is, is like oftentimes, right? It's like there are marketers and there are people in this world who say, okay, I know, I know, I know that, that people are searching for this. We're going to create something and market it as lines man and, and as this high quality product. And it may not be high, super high quality, or maybe mixed <clears> with <throat> something else. And you know, the reality is a lot of these people are trying supplements that aren't really high quality or aren't bioavailable. And that's what's enabling them to be lower, lower priced. Right. Um, right. so the quality of what you're consuming is obviously very important. Um, and, and it can be hard to determine what's really high quality or, or what's not always. And oftentimes people are going for the lower cost option, um, because these things aren't super cheap. Um, so yeah, yeah that's what I've seen. The, the other component here is, you know, how we're trained as humans and, and what we, what we like to think is, okay, we take a pill and we immediately feel effects. Um, uh, for, for sure. Isn't that how it works? <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I think, you know, probably the number one used drug in, in the US, caffeine, like that sort of is how it works, right? And, and and I think there's this belief that everything should 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 work that way. Um and the reality is 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 how these mushrooms are are influencing your body is is over time. It's it's over extended periods of, mm-hmm. of consumption. So it, you know, mm-hmm. you could take a ton of lion's mane, like a like a huge, huge, you know, I won't use the word dose because it makes it sound like a drug and you can overdose. You can't overdose on any of these mushrooms. You you know, the worst thing that would happen is you'd probably get a stomach ache. Um, yeah, right. But, Maybe you get know, the runs or something. That's about yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, but but the worst thing, you know, or, or sort of, you know, if, if you were to take a large dose, like, yes, you, you may be able to feel kind of impacts on the day of, um, but the reality is, is the best way and, and, and really it's most impactful, you know, form of, of consumption is to uh-huh. take it consistently over, you know, several days and weeks. And typically it takes about two weeks to start seeing these impacts, um, to start seeing oh, the value. Interesting. So it's, okay. it's really about consistency and, and basically increasing the levels within your bloodstream and your body. And that doesn't just uh-huh. happen from taking it once. It happens from saying, okay, I'm interested in this. I'm going to try this for the next two, three, four weeks. And then, uh-huh. you know, let's see how I'm feeling. And, and that's always what I recommend as well for a lot of, you know, taking or trying different mushroom supplements is, is try this for a couple of weeks, you know, don't just take it once and decide, okay, so don't work. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So how, well, maybe that's not the right word. What's, what form are your supplements? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so we sell, I mean, and, and what we make is, is we're, tr- and, and the thesis behind this is, is we wanted to make products that people enjoy consuming, right? Whether they have mushrooms or not, and then to kind of sneak mushrooms in there. So, and, and these are items that, you know, a lot of people may be consuming on an everyday basis. So we have a line of what we call like functional granola. So it's a loose bag of granola ah, um, okay. kind of eaten as a cereal or with yogurt. A lot of people top their cereal or like their smoothie with it. Uh-huh. And then we also just released um, a meal replacement bar. So, you know, bars are super popular uh, and yeah. you know, meal replacement bar, it's over 50% almond flour based, you know, non-GMO ingredients, low sugar, high fiber, high protein. And then you also are getting, you know, a, a daily amount of, of a lion's mane extract um, and uh-huh. this vitamin D, um, of the, this vitamin D brown button mushroom powder. So, oh, you know, interesting. Okay. first question is, oh, does it taste like mushrooms or like, can you, can you see the mushrooms? And no, like these are powders and, and like, extracts, right? So, so super potent, effectively powders that, that we're including. And the idea is that we're creating, you know, delicious products that you can't taste them at all. So yeah, I, I was going to say, you're, them. you're, you're tricked into <laughs> Not tricked, but you know, I mean, it's a, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's seamless, right? It's, it's convenient and yeah. seamless. Um, and for us, you know, from the beginning, especially understanding like, Hey, there's a lot of providers out there and, and mm-hmm. suppliers that maybe aren't honest or these aren't, aren't of good quality and you have to test for different phytonutrients. So different, yeah. you know, terptamines is, is, is one of the inc- important phytonutrients. Um, uh-huh. so, so we've partnered with, um, the largest mushroom supplier in the United States. Um, so Monterey mm-hmm. mushrooms, they're in Monterey, California. Okay. okay. And you can find their, their mushrooms on at a grocery shelf, literally anywhere around the world. Um, so if you go to a grocery store anywhere in the world, there's a 93% chance that when you pick up a form of a brown button mushroom, it comes mm-hmm. from their strain from their labs. So oh, we work okay. with them and, and, you know, part of what, what that does for us as a smaller brand is it gives us really good quality mushrooms and, and they actually test our, our post produced good to say, Hey, mm-hmm. after you go through the process of baking this granola, um, you know, we can see this as 20 to 25% of your daily allotted vitamin D. And then it also has a viable amount of, of these lion's mane, um, you know, beta glucans, wow. terptamines, phytonutrients, et cetera. So, you know, okay. we're looking at it from a sense of, Hey, you know, we want to make sure our products actually have good amounts of these mushrooms that are going to be beneficial to the end mm-hmm. consumer. Uh-huh. No, that's, um, that, that makes a lot of sense. Definitely. Yeah. That's, yeah. You have to, so. yeah. So yeah, that, that's, that's a little bit of the background and sort of, you know, what we've been working on and, you know, I'm a huge believer in mushrooms and kind of think, you know, they can really be helpful and, and really make people feel good, especially kind of later in their life, uh, you know, especially if, if there's starting to be some cognitive decline, like, that's the type of consumer we're really trying to help um at the end of the day okay uh-huh yeah yeah so out of out of curiosity mm-hmm. have you or did you this may not be the right word but um look at um doing some you, mm, like testing against other products or... well no 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 for because typically People who are older, mm-hmm. right, do not and take in the, mm. in, you know, the, the, the nutrients, the nutrients. Thank you. I was thinking ingredients. I'm like, ingredients is not right. Okay. Well, that's okay. Yes. The, the nutrients at the same degree or same level as younger people yeah. do. So did you, have you taken that into account or? Um, yeah. 
It's it's a good question. Um, I wouldn't say like that that's been like directly taken into account to say, mm-hmm. hey, you know, we need to you know test this because I'm not I'm not sure how we would even go or about testing a, that or a suggestion maybe on it saying, hey, mm-hmm. you know, if you're over if you're over fifty or whatever, yeah. you, know, you may you may want to eat you know the whole bar X amount or yeah whatnot instead of half a bar. You yeah, know, kind of. Yeah, thing. that's that's a good call out. Um, yeah, I mean we part of the you know part of i wouldn't say that the issue but just as you know some of this research around the mushrooms is still becoming like established in stone if you will like of right. like what what transfers from being a thesis to being proven is yeah. is like what is the recommended daily amount of some of these you know mushrooms and and the issue is that like you know based on quality and and based on um right. you know yeah like how bioavailable etc you know mm-hmm. there may be different amounts that are that are causing impacts over time we you know how we kind of approached that is, is we looked at a lot of the studies and we consulted with you know probably 10 to 15 um you know holistic doctors and, mm-hmm. and naturopathic doctors who are recommending these mm-hmm. ingredients um and uh-huh. asked you know what values are you recommending? You know, where do you think there, there's viable amounts? Um, and what we saw is is for an extract form like ours. So mm-hmm. uh, our, our mushrooms go through a dual extraction, which means that the nutrients are extracted through water and through an oil. And so it actually, uh-huh. there's certain nutrients that are only extracted in water and there's only extracted through oil. Oh, so interesting. you're going okay. through the extraction of extracting both forms of valuable uh-huh. um, phytonutrients. Uh-huh. Um, you know, typically 100 to you know, 2000 uh, milligrams can be, you know, valuable on a daily basis. So our, you know, per serving of, of a meal bar and per serving of granola, we, we hit the 250 mark. Um, so mm-hmm. we try and be above that sort of lower threshold to see the, the benefit. And we actually historically have been higher, um, mm-hmm. but have gotten pushback from retailers to say, you know, hey, we've gotten questions of if somebody can overdose on this, you know, because people are maybe going to be multiple servings. Like, Ah. If somebody eats the entire bag of your granola and, and there's oh, a thousand God, milligrams yeah. per per serving, there's eight servings. That's eight thousand right. milligrams. So huh? that was yeah. part of the reason we, we've right sized sort of. You know, we want to be above that daily threshold where you're going to feel the benefits, but we don't want to be too high. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's it's a good question. I you know, and, and I haven't totally thought about that personally, but yeah, I would, you know, I'd imagine if you're thinking about it to say, okay, you know, maybe I one point two x the daily recommended amount um mm-hmm. that's a good question that, that that will have to do a little bit of research yeah, into yeah yeah you know well and it's it's not just older people it could be people who have other health totally issues right totally and and can't absorb the nutrients as, mm-hmm. as efficiently yeah as yeah. the normal i think that i mean i, I think you that's you're spot on with that honestly yeah yeah could be well, I'm just so. looking at it from a personal point of view. <laughs> yeah, it's, no, you're you're right. You're you're absolutely right. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Interesting, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So so that um that sounds really good. So where do people where do people find your stuff if they want to get some? Yeah, you know, we're not nationally distributed, and in grocery stores, we we're in a you know more regional chain. So you know. Okay. We don't have a huge presence in Northern California where you are, but you know we're in a lot yeah. of health food chains in Southern California, like uh, like Bristol Farms, Jimbo's, Lassen's, Lazy Acres. So smaller regional farm or um, retailers. We're in a lot of regional yeah. retailers up here in the Pacific Northwest. So like PCC, okay. Metropolitan Market, um, kind of several others, and then probably our biggest retailer is Shaw's, which is an East Coast uh, oh. sort of uh-huh. major retail chain. But you know we sell on our website. Uh, well, we that's what I was going to ask you. Do, yeah. do you sell it online? I think that's where most people would probably get it anyway. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we we sell some of our, uh, our our granola products on Amazon, um, but we don't sell our meal okay. bars. Those are pretty new. So we only sell those online. Uh-huh. Uh, we're actually okay. sold out at the moment, but hoping to be back online next week. So <sighs> it happens. <laughs> well, that's good. No, that's a good sign. Yeah, it's a good That's sign. A good sign. People like them. Yeah, the supply chain's yeah. a whole, whole other challenge, but it, it, you're, I hey, I spent twenty years in supply chain, so okay, I know so you all it. about it. Yeah, you get it. Uh, <laughs> Actually, longer than that, but we won't we won't go there. Yeah. Um, the um, so why don't you tell everybody yeah. what your website is? Yeah, I, I was going to say what's your name, and and <laughs> I'll put it in the I'm going to put it in the show notes. Okay, great. As well, for yeah, people. I, 
I don't even think, yeah, I, I mentioned the name of, of, of the brand. The name of the brand is Forage. Oh. So it's like for mushroom foraging. Uh, so it's F-O-R-I-J. Uh-huh. Um, our website is, uh-huh. um, which is the phonetic spelling of Forage. Uh-huh. The okay. website is, is you know, www.forij.co. So, so there's no M, it's just .co. Okay. We, we can't afford to buy the, the .com uh, domain yet. <laughs> so that's pretty funny um but if you google forage like f-o-r-i-j or uh-huh. you know forage mushroom or, or whatnot, okay. you, you sh- it should you know we should come up but yeah that's our website um you know as well as you know susan too i, I could give you you know uh-huh. a, a code if your listeners wanted to try it too and you could put it in the show oh, notes yeah um, that oh, could be, cool. be we, great we could do like susan 20 20 percent off on, on products if, if you'd like and, um huh? yeah so people or are how about they, how about it. okay that's why i was gonna say or something like ht 50 sure let's do that I'll, I'll do both. It's it's TA okay. 50, 20, and then um, Susan 20. Okay. 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 Got it. So that's the code, the discount code. Okie dokie. That cool. sounds great. Yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to try it because you never know for me. My body is 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 very weird. Is it? So, yeah. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. is. <laughs> I know that. That's right. We're all unique, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you know. Anyways, but my husband can have everything, so we'll see. <laughs> Pain. <laughs> he ends up. He ends up finishing things. <laughs> oh, he just tortures you, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yep. So oh, well, great. Anyways, well, let me let me thank you very much for coming on the on the podcast. Um, I think it's been for me, it's been really interesting and and a lot of valuable information. Good, I'm glad. I, yeah, it was great chatting. Yeah, I I appreciate your journey so far, and and definitely wish you a lot of a lot of luck. I think you're in a in a very valuable very valuable place with a value some valuable products. Thanks. Yeah, um, that that's I, the hope. We're just trying to help people out, really. So yeah, yeah. Oh, no, exactly. Exactly. So let me finish up as I usually do, which is that um, neither of us are medical doctors, and this is not to be seen as medical advice. And with that, um, I will tell everybody that I will see them next week. This has been Healthy Tips After 50 with Susan Rosen. To stay on the cutting edge of the most effective health strategies, subscribe to this podcast and let us know what you thought of the show with a comment or like on iTunes. Visit HealthyTipsAfter50.com for this episode's show notes, more resources, and free offers.